we've experienced something um, with an animal, with a spirit, with this uh, electromagnetic field that they possess, um, that they possess with us when we allow it and when we can get to that point that nothing else in my life I've ever experienced with the exception of when um, I, I talk about my son. Welcome, I'm your host, Jamie. I've invited my buddy, Charlie, here today to talk about her healing journey. She's getting ready to embark on an adventure going from Florida all the way up to BC, Canada to a healing ranch where she'll be interacting with horses. So without further ado, one of the most beautiful, courageous, and freedom-loving people I know, Sharla. Welcome, Sharla. Thank you. What a beautiful introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are you doing today? You know, I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. Like really taking in this like lazy Sunday like we were talking about and mm -hmm. doing some swimming and getting some good food in for later and then going to go do after this, go do a sound healing with my friends that have a scalar room here in Sarasota. So oh, yeah. Yeah, so really I'm starting to melt into the idea that I've got some time now moving forward for the next month to my knowledge um, where I get to just have some time off and start this healing journey. So I'm excited. That is so wonderful. So tell me why why a horse ranch in the middle of nowhere, Canada? <laughs> what what made you want to do that? <laughs> it's a valid question. Um you know, the last three and a half years specifically uh, have been such a torrential, you know, crazy time, you know, in on the planet. And it sent me on one journey after another, you know, coming home from the UK to California to Florida, back to California, up and down the West Coast, and then uh, coming to Florida just finally to land after 18 months. You and I have, been, have talked about this before. But we both have been sort of in our own way, you know, ready and um, having to leave family, friends, community, homes, uh, you know, the places that we were raised. I was raised in California. So fast forward three and a half years later, um, you know, I have some experience. In fact, I have quite a bit of experience as an equine patient in the world of equine and human healing. Um, I wrote a book about it in 2016 and publish it then. And so after this whole um, crazy time of, you know, moving and leaving and, you know, relationships ending and then relationships starting and then being on the front lines and our freedom friends groups and things like that, um, I knew that there was going to come a time because I could feel it. I knew it. It was already in my mind so many times that I, you know, that voice that says, you, you, you've got to, you've got to power this down. You got to slow your roll. You've got to, you know, yes, you don't want to be on the road again. Yes, you don't want to be without a home again and a community again and all that, but you got to slow your roll. And through um, um, just a recent surgery that um, I went through, uh, something I didn't know that I was going to have to really go through, but I did. And then last year I had a, also another health, big health um scare as in almost dying um you know i, I really I, I got it you know i got it like i really knew that i had to like go from a sympathetic to a parasympathetic meaning from like slow your roll calm it down what really works and so i you know i like i always you know god gives me the the books the people the movies the music you know the thoughts the the visions and so one day on my youtube uh, feeds. Um, I saw the movie herd H E R D as in a herd of horses or herd of animals. And I, every time I will watch a movie about horses, I feel better. So it was just simply the act of watching this. So one day I took a look at this film called herd and it's by Liz and Ryan. She's a lady that lives up in British Columbia. She and her herd of horses and her, and her husband dogs. And she's an artist and an author. And um, I watched this movie over and over and over again. And it's a beautiful film. It's a documentary. It's an award-winning documentary of what she does up there. And my, my life, as I think we, many of us know, had, I had no way of thinking, how am I going to get up there and get off my job and this and that? All the particulars about, 
how do you go from point A to point Z? Mm -hmm. And um, as I've always learned, um, God already has that way. If I'll listen and if I'll be, um, and if I'll be led, if I'm willing to be led. And that's really, truly, in essence, what happens between humans and horses. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a tender, vulnerable uh, relationship between a human and a horse. And once a horse um, understands that they can trust you, then that changes not just your world, your body, your mind, your spirit, your soul, but it also changes theirs. And I knew the uh, depth in which I had gone through, as you have and many others, gone through this awakening, these transitions, these huge uh, leaps of faith, these moves that we've all done that I know of. Um, you know, I knew that there was going to come a time, and I think this surgery was the final, like, wake up, you can't keep you know, you can't keep moving at this speed. You've had a lot of stuff going on the last few years. So this was, now's the time. You just sold your house in Florida and then you, you've you bought property, a large chunk of property in Tennessee. So you're going to be headed that direction. Now you're going on in this retreat. And I mean, your, your freedom is just off the charts. So that must feel amazing because I've only known you for a few months and I've, I've watched so many transitions happen in your life and just as you go, it's like you are wearing 10 sweaters. And as you go, you're just taking one sweater off, one sweater off. And now you're just down to your tank top as free as you can be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, and I, ha it hasn't, it's true. It, and I, and it hasn't settled with me yet. I mean, the reality of all, because the way my mind looks, it's very much, uh, very much like anybody that's taking on all these big bits, very much like a soldier. Um, you know, you, you prioritize what your next steps are. And a lot of times, I mean, God is my, is my leader. So you prioritize the steps and, and really when you go, you take off this sweater or take off this idea. And this is no longer important. And that is not important. And this is what you've got to do, but to stay at that pace and that intensity, and also to always be pushing it right is not feasible for any length of time. And it's been three and a half years of pushing it. So, you know, once again, um, I said this to my girlfriend, Jesse, at the beginning of the year, we were down in uh, Key West, just taking a few days. And I watched um, the movie Hurt again. And I said to her when she came back, she was out doing a run or something. I said, you know, I have to get back to being around horses again. It's not like I want to, I have to. It's a have to for me because the horses are a horse medicine for me. Um, I know what happens with me because I then become strictly not the leader, but strictly the um, the follower and then I, the participant with whatever horse or horses um, decide that they'll be my teachers. What are you hoping to find at this retreat? Peace, probably. So um, not but not going in with much expectation. No, I, I'm there. Um, I mean, what Liz, I, I spoke with Liz in February after I really realized in January of this year that I, I needed, um, I didn't want, I needed, it was a have to, I needed to get around horses again. And you know what? Uh, oh, our, our friend, uh, Christine Nolan, uh, said something about, uh, Liz and her work up there. And so that's what got me onto Liz's work. And so I reached out to Liz and spoke with her at length in February. And so between February and just April, um, all of this May, actually, I sold my place, transpired. And the only thing coming out of that surgery, which I didn't know I would come out of that surgery, because it was, it was more intense after they got me in there than I knew going in. And it could have gone really wrong. Um, I guess like any surgery can, but specifically this was a big one for me. The only thing that made any sense to me, cause I had sold my place. I had lost out on some property in Tennessee prior to that, that kind of crushed me. Um, I was really working a job that's not aligned with who I am. And that was another, um, part piece of this that said, you've got to, you no longer, you no longer have the luxury of aligning yourself with things that really just go against everything in your being. 
And I'm like, well, how am I going to make money? It's just like so many of us. I've never gone without a meal, but how am I going to do this? So the only thing coming out of the surgery that made any sense that had any glow to me, you know, you mentioned that word glow, which is there's a resonance, there's a vibrancy, there's a frequency there is going up to Canada. And I'm like, you want to go up to Canada? And when I spoke with Liz, she goes, you just got out of a surgery. She goes, are you going to be okay to come up here? And just like before with Yato, I said, yes, because it gives me the beacon it gives me the direction in which I need to go heal with frequencies and people that I know are doing the same. So I looked at my finances. I looked at the fact that I had just sold my house and I wasn't going up to Tennessee at that time. And this was just a few weeks ago. You know, all of a sudden I've got nowhere to live again. I mean, I'm here in a house. Yes. One of my friend's mothers gave me this place. And then I've got a place to come to when I come back from there. But I've bought a one-way ticket. Now I've never done this. And I've got the things that I need for this healing journey. And I am really convinced this is exactly where I'm supposed to go. I want to learn from one of the best natural horsewomen in the world. And I want to know what she knows because the conversation that Liz and I had, she believes just like you do, just like I do, like the, those of us that believe this, that on the other side, through all of this, you we may be on another timeline, uh, frequency, vibration, all of that, you know, dimension. But she truly does believe in her heart of hearts that we can create this world that you and I talk about often, that others that are in this the circle with me talk about often, and that is absolutely feasible. So mm -hmm. Well, I've asked you uh, while you're away on your adventure to take some footage or some photos and document um, your experience, and you have graciously agreed to do that. So we're going to be bringing you back on uh, with your footage and then with a follow-up to see how the retreat went uh, down the road. You might be going for just a week, but you might be going for a few weeks as a volunteer to work with the horses in a, in a deeper way. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to you coming back and sharing what you found. I can't wait. Have I can't wait either. All right, Charlotte. Well, we'll see you. We'll see you in a few weeks. Thanks, Jamie. Can't wait Great. to send you stuff. Great. See you soon. Okay. Bye. 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 Jamie and Lance. Wow. What a, um, what an adventure just to get here to British Columbia. I'm 40 minutes outside of a town called Kamloops and I flew into Calgary from Sarasota, Florida and then stayed the night in um, Calgary and then took a little itty bitty mini plane over like rocks and valleys and things like that to get into this little place called Kamloops. Took an hour cab ride to get here on 320 acres at a place called the Gateway Ranch that's owned by Liz, Liz and Ryan and her husband Kevin that are is the visionaries and, and the founders of her the movie that I sent to you. So how's it going so far? You know, I, without any question, I've gone through some level of energy portal, time portal. I've walked um, acres of this land where there are different stones and rocks and portals and vortexes and, and dragon energy. And you would love this place. And at the same time, it's been taxing mentally, taxing um, emotionally, taxing physically. Um, but that's what happens when you want change. And as you know, um, I'm on the road again when I get back to the South. And, you know, everybody here that I'm, I'm retreating with um, are in the midst of huge change in their life. There's not one person that I've met here, not one, that has come here from all over the world that isn't and hasn't been brought here on their own. And I'm not going to say spiritual journey, their everything journey. It's an everything journey. So I'm doing great. Tomorrow's my last day in retreat. I can barely keep track of time. I don't, it's like I've times disappeared, um, which is kind of cool. Um, I spent some time with the horses today in the barn and it just cracked my heart wide open. And I just cried my eyes out because I totally got that they just want to connect with me. And I had this bizarre thought that if we could do that with the people we are around, it would change everything. Division game over. So you wanted me to do a little 
hello and, and where I am now and then where I'll be when I get back. So I wanted to get this to you and just say hello, I miss you, and um, I'll see you soon. So this is where we go to begin our day here at the ranch, at the gateway. Isn't that interesting, the gateway name? Gateway number is 11. And all the horses come in here after being fed. And they stand here for hours to meditate and meditate with the humans that come in, sit there in these types of areas. Every day is a little bit different, but they literally just stand there together and just do this horse translation, horse meditation, um, talk to the humans, communicate in the ways that they do, discuss the day's events. And uh, we have people coming in throughout the day to clean up the poop and things like that. But um, this is a really, this is our classroom. This is what this is. This is our classroom. Really cool. Hey, good morning, Jamie. This is my walk to work, basically. It's not work, but my retreat every day. Here is, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the land. I've been way up there over there but this is a 320 acre ranch um, for the herd of horses that Liz Mitten Ryan and her husband Kevin own this is where I go into my retreat every day and this morning uh, they're riding one of the horses this is not really a riding place because the horses are wild but we've got one of the young trainers in the ring with Liz, and she's a master um, at all of these horses that you see out here, all of them. They're all part of the same herd. So this is my walk to work every day, or my walk to the retreat every day. I'm day five. I think we've got one more day, and then um, we'll take a little break. All right, bye for now. This is, we let them out of the gates. There's Elise. We're finished with our work on the ranch today. It's super hot, but it's nice. And of course the horses went straight towards the little lake here. Good morning, girls. Good morning. This is Elise. She's here uh, working here at the retreat. Who do we have here? This is Ellie. Oh, Ellie. Four. Ellie is four. Had a lovely ride. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, Ellie's uh, has given me a lot of love in the barn. Uh, whispered and blew a lot of snot on my face one day, I remember. And uh, I just decided to come with a hat on today, see if they don't recognize me. <laughs> All right, we're going to have a good day. This is our morning time, and so we are at the Gateway Ranch, and we've decided to begin our yoga classes here. Elise is a yoga instructor, as well as probably many other things, but we are doing this as we overlook the sun coming up. Good morning. How are you? Look what I'm doing today. I've become the heavy equipment operator based on the fact that these are all women running the show here in um, Gateway Ranch. So anyway, I just wanted to show you what I'm doing this morning. It was a great morning. We did uh, yoga all together, beautiful time, and we're just having a great time, so wishing you a really fabulous, happy day. Bye. Well, I convinced her, 
or we did, and now she's off to, she's a pony. Her name is Flower. You'll see pictures of many of us cuddling with her in her hay stall. And now she's off to see the herd. She was adopted, I don't know, not too long ago. And she, like the other um, horses in the herd that are not of that same herd, um, I guess, family, they kind of have to stay off to their own, but they still are part of the herd. So she seems to be one of the last ones to go. But whenever you find the herd on the land, which could be anywhere, um, she's always there. And she's so loved. We just adore her. She's just, I don't know, indescribably adorable. Welcome back, Sharla. Thanks for joining us again. Jamie, I love the hat. Thank you for having me back. I'm excited to talk to you about this. Thanks. I wore the hat in honor of the horses we're about to talk about. Perfect. So, um, Perfect. I really enjoyed going through all of your footage that you sent. It was hard to pick and choose what to put together for your montage there um, because you just had so many great images and it just looked like such a beautiful retreat. Um, I know I asked you in the last bit if you had any expectations and you said you did not but we always go into things with a little bit of ex expectations uh, I can imagine that you had some sort of idea of what kind of connection you were going to have with the horses um mm -hmm. how, how did that play out for you you know I was honestly I was just excited <laughs> to finally get everything together and actually get to Tampa and then get on this plane and like go on a one-way ticket to Canada uh and get there so by the time I arrived um, at the Gateway Ranch, I knew whatever happened from that point was going to be what it wanted to be for me, like what it would have its way with me. I was in a space of surrender. Um, but as soon as I got there, I knew everything was being taken care of. The food was amazing, all organic. Um, the people that had come from all over the world, uh, there was this very small group of us. And then late, meeting finally Liz uh, Ryan, Liz Mitten Ryan, that's like meeting really. And, and, and I say this very honorably for her, a, a legend. She's created something there that I don't know exists anywhere else in the world. In fact, I'm quite positive it doesn't. So I knew that whatever I decided to do a one-way ticket to uh, was going to do whatever it needed to do with me. So every day was like, I had no idea what was going to happen. And so every day was like a very clean canvas or slate. That sounds really beautiful. I, I watched the herd documentary that you sent me that Liz is uh, about her ranch. And she seems like a magical fairy living in the woods that invites <laughs> people into her world uh, yeah. to experience what she gets to enjoy every day. She seems like a really special person. I, I know people, I know lots of horse people. I know a lot of horse women. And um, when you talk about horses with anybody like the TSA guy, when I was coming back through Canada, I was going through customs uh, or no, through TSA in Canada. And then uh, before I got into the States, he, he said, he mentioned my hat because I was holding my, my cowboy hat. And he says, so were you riding? And I go, no, I was up with the equine, you know, uh, place ranch. And he said, yeah, I've got four horses. Well, that stopped the entire TSA line. And we were like, okay, let's talk about your horses. <laughs> I mean, people that love their horses, um, th they're different. We're, we're just, I'm going to put myself in that category. We're different. We've experienced something um, with an animal, with a spirit, with this 
uh, electromagnetic field that they possess, um, that they possess with us when we allow it and when we can get to that point, that nothing else in my life I've ever experienced with the exception of when um, I, I talk about my son. So... Yeah, horses uh, offer a powerful medicine. I think anybody that spent time around horses can appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So did you find the medicine you were looking for at the retreat? And if yes, what forms did that medicine come in for you? You know, it, it's a great question because I did. I definitely did. Um, but it didn't happen on day one, two, three, or four. And, you know, I'm trying to open my heart and I'm meditating with them and I'm finding like the, these are some of these horses are 1700 pounds. Mm. Okay. And they're right here in your face as some of these pictures will show. So part of it is like, get your feet out of the way. Don't let them step on your feet because they're not doing it on purpose. It's just that they're rewinding and they're doing a sacred geometry in their barn, which I call it the horse church. Uh, and they're rewinding things with you that you've come in with. Um, I found it on day, I want to say, I think I found it on day five. And there was a moment, and I don't remember which horse it was, but there was a moment in which the horses are like right against me and their their breath is breathing in on me. And then I start to breathe with them, like almost nostril to nostril. And every single, you know, in a moment, your, your conscious, your, you know, your linear brain or your fight or flight brain goes, is this a good idea? <laughs> <'Cause it's laughs> so huge. This is like, they could, they could get mad at each other for a moment or they could get spooked or whatever. And, and something could happen. And that happens in any time. That's why this, this um, relationship with horses for me and so many others is so important because it brings you back to a primal place of several places, but two things um, are important right now it brings you back to, into a primal place of trusting yourself, knowing what is around you, knowing something that can hurt you like these big, huge horses, but they don't. And, but trusting yourself is key and understanding what your environment is energetically. It doesn't get any more important than that, especially now. Did you get the sense um, that the horses understand the work they do? Did you feel a, something different? Because as someone who spent a lot of time around horses, did these horses seem to be in tune with their, with their job, with their horsey jobs? They know exactly what they're doing. I just didn't know. I mean, they, they, we started channeling them. There were two of us that were left in the retreat to finish the retreat. And by day four, I think for me, because I have written a whole journals of them, of my time there, you they start to, and, and that's not the first time it's happened, but you get these downloads of direct messages. So they're directly talking with you. They're directly giving you energetic messages. Do they know what they're doing? Yes. Do I know what they're doing at all times? No. But through Liz, which was constantly in the barn, in and out of the barn with us as the retreaters were in there doing maybe the two or three hours work of meditation and writing and praying and just observing. Um, she said, oh, they're, you know, trying to tell you that they're trying to pull that energy away from you. And they just need you to just get more in your heart. And, you know, like I'm in my head, I'm not in my heart. I'm like, okay, I'm in my heart. I'm in my heart. And I'm like, I'm not in my heart. Cause they're like over with that person. And there's an easiness when there's that, that parasympathetic flow, you know, with opening the heart because things physically uh, um, manifest around you. We know this in our own daily lives when we're really in that space of just opening, right? We can see it. We can see it through other people, circumstances, people, places, and things start to show up for us. Well, with the horses, they get really, they get really curious. But the one most important thing that I've ever heard from a human, um, when Liz said, they just want you to know that you love them. And I'm like, she goes like, go up and give them a kiss. And I'm thinking, <laughs> okay, all right. I'm, I'm getting there like where I'm trusting this, but she's like, no, just give them a kiss on the lips. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking, okay. Well, these and, horses are wild too, right? I mean, they're yes. not, yeah, yeah. They're, they're wild. They're, they're wild healers. 
wild and wild yet socialized from the looks of it wild and socialized and they've been doing this work for her and the people that come for 20 years so she's gone through obviously different you know many different horses as they come and born are born in the herd so they they do know what they're doing and each horse because of their history we call ours our baggage right but their history their story can pair up with somebody that is going through something similar and yet they can they can like maneuver their energy and this is what the horses told me one day they said well we are frequency machines all you need to do in our presence is to change your mind we'll help you change your frequency mm. said we're frequency machines and i thought i get that because after the first week of being there i could walk into the barn and i can feel it i could feel the frequency change for me from my walk to where i lived to you know the the barn um, and that's what they do. They, ele- they, they live at a different level of frequency. And because of that frequency, it's a different level of communication. It's very, it's very succinct. It's very benevolent. It's very kind. It's very direct. And it's, and it's personably to you or it's, it's to you directly. Were there any horses that you made a special connection with? I mean, I would, if I was to guess, I would say flower because you sent several pictures of her and took a couple extra special videos of her. Um, Tell me about Flower and any other horses you may have connected with. Flower was a really special, Flower was the pony. Flower was in two people's visions. Number one, Liz, Um, she said she kept seeing this gray pony, gray white pony. And one day she looked on one of her websites and here was this gray white pony. So she called the place that sells these horses or gets these horses adopted out. And Liz said, that's that's the pony. She's coming to me. She's telling me she wants to be here. So I think they went to Vancouver to get flour. So flour arrives on the land. And then one of the other retreaters, um, also has a picture at her home, just a painting of a gray white pony. And she looked just like Flower. Ooh. So Flower has been coming to a couple of retreaters. And for me, I went through something there um, at uh, on the ranch that really, really challenged me. And one day Flower got out as she was a very um, cheeky, you know, very clever little pony. And she knew how to like break open gates and not break open, but like open the gates. Find her way out. Horses have a a way of doing that. (laughs) Totally finding her way out. Yeah. So she hurt her leg one day and she started limping really heavily. Well, that was, you know, a problem because horses need all their legs. There's no such thing as a three-legged horse. So she all of a sudden got everybody's attention on the ranch like everybody's attention. At the same time, I was withdrawing. I was having some issues and I was withdrawing. I was having some, some rough days. Um, and so I started working with flour and Liz had one tiny little carrot left and we were trying to, trying to get her in her hay, hay, uh, uh, pen, but there was at least 50 yards to do this. And this horse literally would not pick up her leg because it it was hurting but at the same time I'm thinking she's a little bit of a drama queen too which we all found out about so Mm -hmm. I had one tiny little carrot in which to try and seduce her you know like get her into her pen and it was I'm like come on flower come on and I all of a sudden these words came to my mind it said take another step and I thought take another step I'm like, flower, just take another step. And I just kept saying this. And all of a sudden, she and I got in this very slow, but very intentional cadence about take another step. And I thought, that is truly what I've been doing for many years now. Just take another step. And I thought, isn't that what so many of us have been doing? Like on 
the planet, just, just take another step, Jamie, just take another step. Here's a carrot, take another step. And we got to the hay pen and she laid down and I thought she just taught me what I needed to hear again. Though I thought I was saving her, she was teaching me. Keep moving forward. Just, just keep, another. just keep swimming as Dora would say. <laughs> as Dora would say, yeah, take another step. Yeah, that's important wisdom. That's, a, that's important. a smart horse there. Yep. So, uh, what about Ellie? You mentioned Ellie too in one of our conversations. Ellie. Oh, I love Ellie. She was the one who blew snot on you, right? Yeah. Ellie blew a <laughs> whole face full of snot on me when she wanted me to get rid of something. And there I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm like, she's this close to me. Right. And, um, she exhaled, but she exhaled everything. And sometimes I just think I need that kind of a reminder to let this shit go, just let it go. And then it was like, all of a sudden you just get a little bit more calmer and you're like, okay, yeah, let it go. Just, just let it go. Who cares about that? And I think working with the horses is very humbling for me because I ended up in the second two weeks picking up um, barrel fulls of horse poop and cow poop, uh, which also helped me to get into shape because if you do that for hours at a time in 90 degree weather, you're going to sweat and you're going to start building your muscles again. It reminds you, it reminded me of how much stronger I really am uh, than just you know, sitting back and trying to protect myself in life. So Ellie was a master, is a master healer. Ellie's a master at um, being a mother as well as being a healer master horse. She's gentle. She's kind. She's very wise with her wisdom. She's not as stark as some of the other horses. She probably knew I needed that kind of gentle healing and mm -hmm. gentle reminders. Um, Ellie, every single one of them have different personalities, but Ellie seemed to be the one that, that when I was in retreat seemed to come to me the most, once I was able to just be as vulnerable as I needed to be with them, she was the one that I was least afraid of. I didn't need to be afraid of any of them, but some have different, like we do personalities and have a different way of handling. Oh things. yeah. Yeah. They're just like us in that way. Yeah. Same with all animals. Mm -hmm. They yes. all come here with their own spark. Yes, they do. So it sounds like there were some uh, really powerful uh, experiences going on with the horses themselves and also uh, just the chop wood carry water of working the retreat afterwards. You mentioned in uh, the vid one of the videos you sent uh, that the the land felt itself felt really powerful. I think you used the the term vortex, portal, uh, dragon energy. Can you explain by starting like what you meant by that dragon energy that sparked my curiosity? Uh, Liz had a geomancer and a geomancer from what I understand is someone that can go on the land and understand where like very strong levels of energy reside and, and, and basically the terminology of what that energy is. This land has a lot of dragon energy. And in the context of what Liz uses dragon energy is that it's got a lot of um, metamorphosis and manifestation mm. better to have these retreats that when you come there, she told me point blank, she says, this will change your life. And I went, that's interesting because I'm in the midst of just putting all my stuff in storage here in Florida. And I'm in the midst of going into whatever this next um, act is, next um, bit of time is in my life. And so it was the perfect place. So dragon energy uh, signifies metamorphosis and manifestation. So tell me a little bit about your plans with your property and how that involves horses, your property that you bought in Tennessee. Well, we were told, um, my, my land partner, um, had a massage with, uh, her masseuse and he's also, um, he's also an empath, but more than that, he, he's, 
he, he understands, he sees things. And the land I just found out last week, our land is up against um, a bluff. And that's the end of many of our, the parcels of this land. And wild horses apparently were moved onto this bluff area over and over many, um, for, for over the years. And that's where some of them like lived. So there were wild horses there. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, also, there's a horse rescue company, or I should say couple that also purchased a couple of the parcels of land. And so their, uh, their goal you know, their, their idea is to take some of the horses and put them on lot, lot A or lot B, whatever you want to call it. So there will be horses up there. And then one of my dear friends will be bringing her horse up. Um, I think it's, it's perfectly on time with all of this, because what I learned living off grid in British Columbia, though it was a very luxurious way to live off grid, I will say, um, and all the horses, it was as if I was learning what's really important in living off grid by virtually being there, by, you know, being there. And then also um, having, being on the ranch with horses for the three weeks. So I left with a lot of natural horsemanship uh, wisdom and experiences that I would not have ever had before I had gone there. And then also living off grid gave me the absolute like top three things that we're going to need, even though we won't completely be living off grid at this time, what we want to move into and what we have to have without an exception. Yeah. Do you plan on getting a horse for yourself? Not at this time. Um, I, I've learned one thing about being in the horse world without being an owner is that all owners need help with their horses. It's kind of like it takes a, a village, you know, with all of us. I don't specifically need to have one for myself. And um, I think that the horses that are going to be there on the land are going to need a lot of care and their owners aren't going to be there specifically. Like I imagine myself being there. So uh, your, your history with horses go back a long way. Uh, I know that you wrote a book called... Wonder and Beauty, My Journey from Heartbreak to Healing Through the Wonder of Horses. Yes. And uh, tell me a little bit about that book and what inspired you to write that. This book um, was a culmination of um, a trauma that myself and my son experienced. Uh, I ended up publishing the book in 2016, wrote it in 2014-15. And the eight years prior to that, uh, my son had been stolen at the age of 10 and I didn't have any, I had very little, if any, um, I had no physical time with my son, uh, based on, uh, what the people did to create this for us. And I, that's, I think probably when I started to really dig into what spirituality was for me. Uh, survival, spirituality, um, also all kinds of other modalities that I that I entered into in order to save my own life, in order to still be here for him now. So after talking with humans and you know psychiatrists and all the whole lot of them, I came upon these pictures of horses with horses, and I knew that that was the one thing that started to calm my brain. And every time I would watch one of these horses, which some of them were Disney films, they were just about horses. But I, I had done virtually everything else to help myself after I knew I could not um, have time with him anymore due to what these other people decided to do to us. Um, I found horses and I found healing and I found a thing called equine therapy, which subsequently a couple years later after that, I then wrote my book. Wonder and Beauty, My Journey from Heartbreak to Healing Through the Wonder of Horses. And God completely, utterly had the reins to our story. And I wrote my book by by channeling what, what God wanted me to write. How did horses come in, into play with your healing? And that was it just from just from seeing them from a distance or were you coming in contact with horses? No, I, um, one day after watching the movie Buck by Buck Brenneman, um, it's a documentary. He I love, I love that documentary. I've seen it. Okay. So you've seen it. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. 
that sort of was my daily medicine. I would watch that and I would be like, okay, here are the clues. This is how I'm calming down, all that sort of thing. What I did was one day I just got the idea, the download, Google, when I was still using Google, Google horses and healing. Horses and healing, three words. And through those three words, all of this data started popping up on my screen that I didn't even know existed as in equine therapy. And so from equine therapy, I followed those breadcrumbs and those breadcrumbs led me to uh, a doctor named Nancy, Dr. Nancy Lambert, Fridas Lambert. And she happened to be in my area. I was in Northern California at that time. And I, my entire day, morning, day and night existed of making the money I needed to make in order to go to one of her workshops. And from that workshop, she then became my therapist and my equine therapist. And I think at this point in time, my spirit guide, as well as my earthly guide to going from an incredibly dire, like as in planning my suicide often to being a healed and whole woman, mother and child of God where I am now. And that's a huge cavern to traverse. So that's why I'm so committed. And I know what healing through horses can do for humans. If I remember correctly, the book that you wrote helped you to get back in contact with your son. Yes. But before the book existed in my, in my realm in my, you know, in my psychological realm or the spiritual realm, I started writing a blog um, called Never Give Up Mom. And that preceded, those five years preceded the writing of my book. And Never Give Up Mom was a blog through WordPress. And my girlfriend in Texas uh, started that blog November two, 2012. And God, from that point on, said, this is what you're going to write. And if you can do this once a month, because I was so broken, like so shattered, so shattered at that time that all I could do was like, like with, like with flower, take another step. All you got to do is write your love to your son and never give up mom. I wrote for five years, almost every month. That's all I could muster the energy, the, the space, everything. My life was completely demolished. I wasn't living on the streets. I wasn't doing any of that, but as a mother and a woman and a child of God, I, I was, I was in dire straits, but never give up mom was the five years prior to, to my book. Tell me about the mandala prayer that you did at the end of the retreat. The mandala was a exercise and, you know, Liz's, Liz's curriculum and retreat one, which is what I fully participated in. We didn't even get to three quarters of the things that we could have done, but it was just this beautiful experience. And it was a roller coaster ride of like being up and then being down and then being healed and then going the next day and then adding our energy and our recovery, I should say, our renewal. I like renewal better every day. So the mandala was an exercise that we were asked to do, the retreaters, and we were we could go anywhere in the 320 acres. You can imagine how big this is. There was a place that reminded me of my dad. My dad passed away in 2007. I, as a little girl, grew up traversing the mountains with my dad and hunting and fishing with my dad. And every and I lived in California at that time. And I remember this sweet smell of sage, which is why when I saw the sage, you know, on your land, I, it reminds me of my dad. And so there was this one rock where the star chakra resides because she has all chakras on that 320 acres, including the star chakra. And then the chakra that resides above the crown chakra on her property. I've decided that I would build my mandala um, to leave for future travelers, like retreaters, people that are hiking there on the land for those that were passing through life, just as we are here today. And so I wrote something because I came there for healing, mind, body, spirit healing. And I, and I suspect that everybody that enters the property does the same thing. So 
I created a triangle. It was supposed to be four angles, but I created a triangle. I pulled the sage. I pulled some of the flowers. I pulled some of the really special rocks. I pulled some of the wood. And then I wrote my, um, I wrote my wish uh, to them. I folded it. And then I, it's on, it resides underneath the rock today, unless I haven't been gone long enough for it to disintegrate yet. So probably not, probably. <laughs> probably not disintegrated yet. Uh, what do you remember, or do you want to share what you wrote for your mandala? Yeah, I would love to. I, I wrote this on seven, seven, uh, which was July the 7th. And at that time I had, I had gotten the experience of becoming one with the herd, just a lot like flower was the, you know, the, the white pony, the gray pony, and she was part of the adoption of the herd. I, towards the end of my retreat, I became one with them as well. Uh, so much so that I know that if you said to me, Jamie, you're going to actually stay in the barn that smells like poop and pee and all these things that go on in the dust flying around for two hours, meditating with the horse, and you're not going to want to leave. And I'd say, yeah, that's exactly what happened because that's how beautiful and powerful that experience is with them. So I wrote this for fellow travelers. And I think that it, it as well is um, reminiscent of what we're all doing today, but I called it one with the herd. Um, what I wish for you, sacred traveler, is to love all of yourself, to open up to your heart's desires and to answer the call of the Almighty. To allow yourself to be free in this frequency of the land and the people and the herd. To give yourself time to heal, cry, and care for yourself in any manner you choose. To receive the abundant nature of the herd while you're here and to carry their messages back home with you to break down in order to break through and if needed again and again to feel and honor yourself through this process and to surrender to the highest outcome for your life in complete gratitude and honor for my time here. Thank you for sharing that. That was beautiful. Thanks for asking. Gratitude. Gratitude's everything. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is a good point to lead into the last question I wanted to ask you. And that is, do you have any advice for others on their healing journey? Don't, don't discount. You know, I always use this as, as something. If I, if I get kind of get a download or a feeling or an intuition, don't discount your intuition. It's the highest form of communication you have from the creator. Number one, and probably number two, if you hear it, or see it in a, a book or a sign or somebody mentions it to you more than more than once, twice, follow it. And number three, if you decide to follow that intuition, as in buy a one-way ticket to Canada <laughs> after you've had the surgery and put all your worldly belongings in a seven by six storage unit. And you know that horse medicine is the medicine in which it doesn't cure you, but helps you move through what you need to move through in order to continue to move on to the next chapter of your life, then do it. Don't hesitate. Don't question it. And just like flower taught me, don't be, don't be a, don't be a drama queen of your own life. Don't be a pony that's always looking backwards because there is nothing backwards. It's only ahead of you and just take the next step. And if you did those three things at any given time, especially when you're in that cavern of sorts in your life, I promise you, I have no doubt in my mind, you will be led to the ground in which you are supposed to be and reside on, and it will, without any question in my mind, be for your highest good. And if it's for your highest good, how could it not be for others that love you? 
Thank you, Sharla, for that wisdom on bravery. You are a special lady. I just love you. I love you too. I really do. So I'm going to include a link to your book, which uh, they're on. it's on Amazon. And there's a Kindle and an audiobook version. And once again, the book is called Wonder and Beauty, My Journey from Heartbreak to Healing Through the Wonder of Horses. And I'll also have a link to the herd documentary if anybody's interested in checking that out. Thanks again for coming on more of us. And I look forward to the next time we talk. Thanks, Jamie. Have, Thank you have so a great much. day, sweetheart. Bye. Bye-bye. If you'd like to be a guest on more of us and bring your story to light, send us an email with a brief description of the story you'd like to share.